I'm super excited about what's going on with all the AI tools out there, particularly the ones that are related to 3D animation and modeling. I mean, it seems like there's a new tool out there almost every day and always something new to try out. I want to spend some time today looking at 3D AI Studio. So this is a tool I recently found out about and it offers a range of tools like image generation, 3D model from an image, and 3D model from a text prompt. I've only just played around with it for a few moments, so this is really my first time diving in and trying it out. So come along with me and let's see what it can do. There's a link to their website in the description if you want to try it out for yourself. Let's get started. So this is their website and it's pretty simple to get started. Uh, there's a little bit of information on here kind of trying to entice you to get uh, moving with their software. Uh, but really just get in here and click on Launch Studio or Let's Get Started, it's free. And that takes you out to the AI Studio itself. And full disclosure, they've given me a, some free credits to try this software out. So here we are in the 3D AI Studios interface. And you can see you've got a lot of options in here. You can come home. You can see all the projects that you've been working on. You can see some of the things that I've been playing around with before. In this home section, you can go directly to image to 3D, text to 3D, create an image, or go to the documentation. Um, the documentation is actually really good in this software. It's on GitHub, but it gives you kind of a rundown of what you should do. So entering your prompt, generate 3D, 3D models, it suggests that you remesh your models uh, to get higher resolution and quality. The first one's kind of like a draft mode, I guess. After doing that, you can actually choose the file format. If you don't remesh it, you can't choose the file format. Uh, it just gives you a glib file. For this demo, I decided to focus on three animals and I kind of chose them at random based on the theme of air, land, and sea. So I'm going to do a California condor, an African black rhinoceros, and a great white shark. So we'll see what we get. So text to 3D prompt, I've got some prompts uh, typed in in advance using some of the suggestions. And actually, just really quickly, if you go to the prompt guidelines here uh, in their documentation, it shows you some examples for good prompts and how to do this. It gives you high resolution, uh, detail sort of prompts, and stylistic prompts. So I've, I've taken some of these and created my own prompts based on some of their recommendations in here. And so the first one I've got is uh, California condor in flight. So it's a realistic 3D model of a California condor. Uh, and, and I put in some of those prompts like in highly detailed, high resolution, high quality, 8K ambient lighting. So those are the uh, prompts that I put in and let's see what happens. So this one works a little bit differently. Some of the other software uh, tools I've used give you like four previews and then you choose the one you like the best. This one kind of just, it's like a roll of the dice. You you go and see what happens and then that's that's the one you go with. Uh, you, if, you wanted, if you want more options, you can generate new ones, but it's sort of one at a time. That actually looks like a California condor or something. It looks like uh, some sort of bird at least. Um, I don't have a picture of a California condor handy. Let's go find one. Uh, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to do all of these. So here, let's just do this right while we're out here. Calif California condor. So here's a f Google's representation of California condors in flight. Uh, you can see sort of the head, black images. They've got this very descriptive or very distinct um, white underbelly. So we can compare that to what we're seeing here. Uh, I'm not seeing any color underneath. Uh, it, there's some interesting blue. It looks like it's diving to grab something. Um, but I think this is actually a, a pretty decent model for just being generated out of thin air. Um, it looks like he's kind of banking and all of that. But let's go ahead and um, download this guy. After I've created at least one version of each animal, I'm going to then go through and use the remesh functionality and see if we can get a, a, a better resolution model for each one. So that's great. I think I'm going to stick with that one. And then I'm going to just jump ahead and do the rhinoceros and see what happens. So this is for an African black rhino. Uh, and I've used similar prompt sort of guidelines at the end here. So let's hit generate on this one. I like the way that it pops up originally with the sort of mesh on and then it kind of disappears. So this has got some strange texturing th things happening. I think the one side actually looks really pretty nice. Let's go double check this too. African black rhino. 
And so here are some images of an actual African black rhino. So you can see they have two horns, right? And uh, very much rhinoceros-like. And that, it, this one looks like it's got three horns. I'm not a rhinoceros expert, but I see some variation on here. Um, that looks like the two horns are pretty much standard, standard issue. Uh, I kind of like the pose that it's in. It looks very much rhinoceros-like. Um, the tail's tucked in. But, you know, a pretty decent model for just typing in a few words and getting something out of it. And I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and remesh these later on, and we'll see if it gets any more detail. If you're not happy with what you get, you just hit generate, and it'll try again. Let's try it see what happens. This one already appears to be much more successful. It looks like a, yeah, this looks very much like a rhinoceros. I don't know what's going on with those black marks on its butt. Did those actually happen? Let's see. I don't see any, you know, butt shots. No, I don't see any black marks. Uh, that's something that could pretty easily be, you know, doctored up in software though. Um, not a bad model. Very rhinoceros-like. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and download that guy. That's going to be my favorite rhino model. And then let's move on to the next one. So great white shark, air, land, and sea. So same prompt, basically, but uh, great white shark. And here we go, great white shark model. Uh, it looks like he's got some weird extra fins on there, so not perfect. This looks more like a mako to me than a great white shark. And his body's very short, so a little weird. Let's pull up some great white shark images and see what we get. I'm sure you all know what a great white shark looks like, but hey. So very, very torpedo-shaped, round, oops, uh, you know, jaws. Uh, so uh, not really exactly there. So I'm going to go ahead and try let it try again and generate a new one. This one looks a lot better. Uh, it still has some weird extra fins on here, but if I ignore these two little things, like I, f I would take this into my software and chop them off. Its fins are not even, actually, no. This has got a lot of issues uh, in terms of being able to use it for anything right away. The only portion of this I could actually use is like from the head forward. Like the head, it looks like a great white shark. The body looks like some something else. Uh, so let's give it three times. Uh, let's give it a third try and see what happens. Yeah, again, I, I gotta say, I'm, <laughs> he's got a fin coming out of his of his belly here for some reason. Uh, dare I give it four times? I think four times is my limit. Four times, uh, we're gonna try one more time. This one's much better, actually. I mean, I think it still has some issues. Uh, for some reason, it's making them very front heavy. Like, it looks like a tuna. Uh, um, it's got a huge head and little tiny body. But, you know, I don't, of the four that I generated, I think this is the one that I would probably move forward with just to try to use. So let's go ahead and download that. So I'm going to go into my home section here now and go through the process of generating the remesh for each of these models that I want to keep and use. Uh, and so this is the, I'll just do these, I guess, in reverse order. So the Shark is something I want to keep and use uh, this last one. So this is the one I just created. Uh, right now it's in a glib file format, but if you remesh it, it actually allows you to choose which format you want it to be in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit remesh. I'm not going to do the remesh as quads. I'm going to keep it as an FBX, and I'm just going to hit remesh. And other software tools I've used, when I remesh as quads, it sort of changes the detail of it a little bit and sort of reduces it down. I'd rather do that in a different software package personally. I'm going to do the same thing with the Rhino model. So we'll do FBX, and I'm going to leave it at the default settings. And then let's go to my previous page. We'll find my Condor here. and remesh the condor as well yeah, as an FBX and hit remesh. And it says this can take five minutes and cost 
two credits. So you can see my credits going down as I'm doing this process. And it's just going to sit here and spin for me until it's done. Um, I was processing one in the background here previously. I'm just going to cancel that one. And uh, I'll come back and we'll take a look at what we've got from the 3D mesh, the remesh of these objects. So it's been about two and a half hours since I clicked the remesh option on here, even though it says it's only a five minute or so uh, process, it still hasn't finished any of the remesh. Uh, and I've tried refreshing my screen and everything. So that seems to just not be working at the moment for some reason. Uh, and so I decided to just to go ahead and look at the models that I had produced already, the ones I downloaded earlier. And um, if you ever want to come back and look at those models, you can come into the little eyeball view section right here and it'll load up the model so you can take a look at it on uh, same controls as the other viewer so you can always come in here and take a look at your model uh, but I've, I've downloaded these already and if you download them here it just gives you another download um, and it's a glib file glb file so i've downloaded the shark and the rhinoceros and the condor and we'll take a look at those in cinema 4d now, Cinema 4D is the software that I use normally for all my 3D work. However, I know that Cinema 4D does not open uh, GLB files directly or natively. And so I've had to figure out some sort of workaround in order to actually be able to see the files that I've downloaded from the software. And after some digging around, I've learned that I can do this in Blender. So I've opened up Blender. It may seem a little strange for somebody to open up Blender to work on, work on something and then use a different software. but Blender's not my software of choice. Uh, I've been using Cinema 4D for a long time. And so I feel more comfortable in there. I just want to get the model out of here. And so what I decided to do is go ahead and import these models here. And I'll show you how I did it on one of them. And then I'll just jump ahead to Cinema 4D with all of them open. So let's do the rhinoceros. I'm just going to... So I'm in Blender right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say File, Import, uh, GLTF, or GLB Files and find my file. I know that number 10 here was my rhinoceros, so I'm going to just go ahead and import that. And it comes in uh, with the material on it already. If you click the little texture button up here at the top right, um, you should be able to see it and rotate around. It looks like a pretty good quality model. Um, so in general, I'm really happy with the quality of the models that this software produces, I think. They have some nice levels of detail. And even if you do turn off and on the materials, it's it's giving me a, ni a pretty nice quality model just from that first round of uh, production. So let me show you how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna export this into a single folder. So I've selected my uh, Rhino here and I'm gonna say file, export. I'm gonna use a Collada file. I've tried others and it didn't work. Uh, I'm gonna actually create a new folder for this one. So. Let's make a new folder and call it Rhino. The reason I'm doing this uh, is when you save this file out, it's going to produce the image and everything like that in there. And it's, if you have a, if you try to put them all in the same folder, it's going to overwrite the images for the other one. So by putting them in their own folders, everything will be collected into one space. So let's hop over back into Cinema 4D and we'll just go ahead and open this file. So I'll make sure I come into my Rhino folder here. So you should see your DAE file and your image zero file. And let's open that up. Say OK. For some reason, it takes these a little bit of time to open up. I guess there's a lot of extra information included in the file. I don't know a lot about this file type personally. OK, so it's opened up. Uh, and you can see there's some overlap here, something going on. We've got our material. We've got an extra material. And if I open up this node 2 and geometry and mesh. You'll see there's our, there are bunches of splines in here. We can just delete this entire mesh folder in Cinema 4D. Keep the geometry section. I'll go ahead and delete the camera, the light, the node, and that'll leave me just with my Rhino. Uh, and so it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and um, put a dome light in here so we get some nice even lighting. And I'll turn on the Redshift IPR so we can see what we're getting. And so this is uh, just a quick preview of the model from 3D AI Studio. And the texture map is pretty decent. I mean, it's got some flaws, uh, but 
overall, it's pretty nice. The, the model itself could use a little bit of work, I think, but you know, a few minutes of maybe cleanup time and just some touch-ups, you can probably get something that's actually useful out of this. So I'll go through and do this with each of the others, and then I'll see in them a little bit once I've got all three models in here. All right, so we're back in Cinema 4D. I've got all the uh, models in imported in here from uh, with the Collada format. I just wanted to take a closer look at them just to give a, a better sort of feeling. So I put a dome light in here that gives even light all the way around each object, so we really get a sense for how the textures are developed and what the built-in lighting on the model was like. So I'm just going to kind of look at each one one at a time here. So this is the Condor model, and we can zoom in on it and see that there's not a lot of resolution in the eyes and things like that. So it is missing some detail, and the underbelly of the bird seems really just not to have a lot going on. It's very dark. And so I think, you know, uh, to use this in a real project, I think you'd have to do a little bit of work to it and you know, continue to make some updates. I do love the fact that it's got these like raggedy wings and it's flying. Uh, you know, it looks like it's really kind of active. Let's take a look at the uh, rhinoceros, so our land object. And I have to say I'm most impressed with the rhino. It, it looks like a rhino. It's got uh, a pretty good material on there. All of these models have this like above overhead lighting coming down. So like the underbellies are really dark. Um, it'd be wonderful if they had more even lighting so that you could actually light them yourself and, and know that you're going to get the lighting the way you want it to be. Uh, some interesting color, and from side to side, I think you know one side's a little darker than the other one. So, uh, but overall, uh, considering all I did is type in "make me a rhino," I, I think this is pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, the shark, uh, you know. Got some issues uh, with some raggedy fins, extra fins, but it looks shark-like. Uh, the face, the head actually looks pretty much like a great white shark. Um, and uh, again, considering the fact that all I did is really type in, make me a shark, uh, it's pretty, pretty impressive uh, and uh, it's not bad. So there we have it, uh, land, air, and sea animals using 3D AI Studio. Uh, let's pop in just for a minute and take a look at the pricing just so you get an idea for what that's about. One of the things I like about their pricing plan is that you can actually buy credits, just credits. You don't have to have a, like some of the other software packages make you buy a pro plan where you're already paying every month. Then only then can you buy extra credits. You don't have to have a monthly package with this one. If you just want if you had a project and you wanted to buy some credits, you could spend, you know, six ninety and get enough, uh, generation credits here to actually do something with that, which is pretty nice. And then they have some pretty low cost plans uh, that also allow you to continue doing more things and download different file formats. This one-time payment and versus subscription model, I think is pretty cool. So that's it for my look at 3D AI Studio. There are a lot of things I like about this software package. I think the, the interface is really nice. Uh, the fact that you can get to all of their tools pretty easily within this sort of studio looking thing. It feels kind of like a 3D software package. I really enjoyed working in that space. I think the uh, pricing plan, considering that they have the sort of pay as you go option, so you can just buy credits to, to do things with, is a great option. Uh, there are some things that are kind of frustrating. I feel like the, the fact that my remesh never actually worked out, I let it sit there for two and a half hours, and I never was able to download any remeshed thing. Overall, I feel like this is a tool that's pretty comparable to the other tools that are out there right now. The quality of the models is about the same as some of the others that I've used, and the quality of the texture maps is about the same as some of the others that I've used. I didn't really dive into the other options available, like the image to 3D model option that they have. So there are other tools in there that might be really worth the time and effort to play with, and I'll come and play with those at a different time. Right now, I just wanted to work with the the text to 3D model um, option. This is definitely a, an AI 3D tool that I'll be keeping my eye on for the future. Uh, I hope you'll take a look at it. Again, there's a link in the description if you want to download it and try it for yourself and your own projects. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you in another one.